you're thinking you did not go to bed at 1.30 having watched too many movies and then already watched a movie before 10 a.m. on um, the next day, but I did. I'm addicted. Um, this was the last film from TCM's uh, Gay Hollywood Spotlight from Thursday, and I'm glad I saved it for Sunday morning. It was a perfect Sunday morning film. This was uh, 1964's Ride the Wild Surf. It was originally supposed to be directed by Art and Joe Napoleon, and they produced and wrote the film. But during the production, they uh, were replaced by director um, um, Don Taylor. And then Don Taylor, his mom died, and Phil Carson Carlson came in and finished the rest of it. So it's sort of a mixture of several creators. Um, and lots of the cast changed a bunch during the film. But what you end up with is a cast including the Surfer Boys, Fabian, whose character's name is Jody, Tab Hunter, whose character's name is Steamer, Steamer Lane, and it's like my favorite movie character ever now, um, and Peter Brown, who plays Chase Colton. They've come to Hawaii's, um, what is this bay called? They filmed it in Waimea, yeah, Waimea Bay. So they've come because they're, they're there for the, yeah, Waimea. They're there for the big waves that are coming. And this was actually filmed in Hawaii, unlike many beach movies, um, because the large waves were um, big right when this was happening. So it was perfect time to film this. These three surfers, they've come to surf these big waves during Christmas break. They meet ladies, obviously. So Steamer falls for Lily, played by Susan Hart. Uh... Let's see. Jody falls for Bree, who is on a trip from uh, Mills College, which means she does not get around a lot of men. Mills College being an all-girls school in Oakland, um, played by Shelley Faveras. And Chase, who is a bit of a stuck, stick in the mud, ends up with Augie, played by Barbara Eden, with strange red hair. Barbara Eden is a black belt, and she the first time you see her, she like manages to beat him up without actually beating him up, and then feels bad because he's he's emasculated and it's hilarious um they are they are training for these waves they're trying to meet these you know bag these ladies it's a romantic comedy and also just a fun surf film it kind of reminded me of blue crush like i feel like the structure of blue crush um heavily relied on this structure of this film um there's a lots of really beautiful surf cinematography um and actually, several surfers, so where is it? Several surfers actually showed up in this. Um, where did it go? Oops, I lost it. Several surfers that were in, um, where is it? I had it open, and then I can't find the spot. There it is. Several surfers that, um, if you've seen The Endless Summer 15,000 times like I have, you recognize their names did a lot of the surfing that you stand in for um, the actors. And that was Mickey Dora, Greg Knoll, and Butch Van Art Artsdalen. I just looked up Butch Van Artsdalen's life, and it made me really sad, so don't do that. Um, also, there's a um, – there was an Australian surfer who uh, – here it is. I guess he's not a surfer. He was a swimming champ. Um, Murray Rose is also in this for a second. And – it was just really fun. Like it, it the the one down. There's like two downsides. One, it tried to be respectful of Native Hawaiians, and it's as respectful as you can get from an early '60s film. I think um, there is one guy that is one of the surfers that is clearly not a white dude, and that's exciting. It's just he only gets like three lines. Um, and it would have been nice to see the women surf, especially the women who are supposed to be, like, only only Shelley Faberis is visiting. All the other women are locals. And if you've seen The Endless Summer, you know that there were plenty of women surfers and always have been. And it would have been nice to see, like, one one girl surf. Like, just give me one girl surfing. Um, but otherwise, this was just a really fun film. It was originally supposed to ha start Jan and Dean, but because of the Frank Sinatra Jr., um, kidnapping like for some reason they got fired uh so <laughs> don't kidnap Frank Sinatra Jr. I, you know I don't know but their song is still in it but the song is at the end of the movie so the film 
doesn't have a lot of those like beach party feels with like dances on the beach and silly songs and um the shrimp shack shooters or whatever it is from that thing you do it's just really a straight up like uh, spring break feeling romantic comedy it reminded me kind of of where the boys are except a little less um dark and it was just it was fun everyone had good chemistry tab hunter is so beautiful um which reminds me if you have not seen tab hunter confidential please watch it it is on netflix it was a great documentary uh, if you like surf movies if you like hawaii uh if you like romantic comedies this is a good film it really for the most part was just enjoyable and um has a really cool trailer a really cool poster so i don't know if this is on dvd i think it might be um i watched it on tcm but really you should just check it out it's fantastic this is ride the wild surf from 1964.